Hello everyone, my name is Kerry Rogers, pastor and minister of Pathway to Peace Ministries, and we're excited to be with you again today. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to know truth? I mean, there's a lot of chaos going on. We got war on terror. We got a, a, a new, newly elected president and a lot of people's worry because we see a lot of riots going on. We have a lot of things happening in the world today. Police shootings. We got riots going on. We got terrorism and people are worried. They don't know what's, what, what in the world's going on. So I want to talk to you today. You know, we got the hurricanes, the floods, the fires. And it's so many things that you can't even keep up. Earthquakes. You know, the Bible talks about a lot of these things going on. And, and don't you want to know the truth? And that's the question today. Do you want to know the truth? And the Bible reveals only the truth shall make you free. So today we're going to be talking about truth. Matter of fact, let me ask you a question. Do you want to be set free? Are you just tired of not knowing? Now, the Bible has the answers. Now, the main thing I have today, first, I have to ask you a question. What is truth? And what is absolute truth? And a lot of people don't even understand what is truth. Now, let me ask you a question. Is there any such thing as relative truth? In other words, person A has, says they have truth, but it opposes with person B. And person B says they have truth. Now, can they both have truth when they oppose each other? So in other words, so can truth really be relative? Let me ask you a question. What's one plus one? Two. That's always two. That's known as absolute truth. That's not relative truth. So if I believe that one plus one is three and you believe one plus one is two, the reality is it's still two. It would never be three. Absolute truth. So in other words, is there a such thing as absolute truth? Yes, there has to be. Because if you see it in mathematics, you see it in the word of God. Now, let me ask you a question. How many ways can I dial your phone number right? How many ways can I dial your phone number right? One way. That's it. That's absolute. Now, how many ways can I dial your phone number wrong? Millions. <laughs> Millions of ways. Now, the Bible reveals clearly that it is absolute truth. In other words, that's the only way to truth. Now, there's an enemy out there, the devil himself and his demons. They have what they think is relative truth, which is literally lies. That leads you down the wrong way, just like those numbers. I can dial your phone number wrong all day long, but I can only dial your phone number right one time. You have one number and I have to put in all the digits correctly in order to reach you. It's the same thing with the word of God. I have to read it and study it in order to reach and know the will of God to make it to heaven. And Satan is out there giving us these lies. Let me just let me just show you something before we because we're today. I, I mean, if you're serious, if you're serious, you don't watch this whole series because I'm introducing to you to a Bible prophecy boot camp. Yes, a Bible prophecy boot camp. And this is a lesson number one. And I'll explain it in more detail as we go along. But Bible prophecy boot camp is for those who want to know the truth in these last days. That's what it's about, knowing the truth. And this is for anybody. Now, you may be an atheist. You may be a Bible believer. It doesn't matter what denomination you're in. This is for people who are beginners, have no idea, they're struggling, they want to get, they want to get through, or this are also for people to get them out of their seats and get in the streets and doing the work and will of God. So this is a training for you, but it's also a training for the beginners. And I, I promise we'll, we'll try to take as slow as we can as we go through this Bible prophecy boot camp. But you know, the Bible says in John 14, 6, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the what, everybody? Truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So the Bible makes it very clear. That's what you're known as absolute truth. You know, the word, the name Jesus means Jehovah is our salvation, meaning Lord, self-existing one. Because in the name of Jesus is divine. And we see clearly that Jesus is saying, I am the absolute way. I am the absolute truth. And the life. So if we want to make it to heaven, the Lord is revealing who, how to make it. And that's through Jesus Christ. Let's move on. John eight thirty two, And ye shall know the truth and the what? Truth. 
shall make you free. The what, everybody? The truth shall make you free. And this is absolute truth. That's what's going to make you free. Not a lie. A lie will keep you in bondage, even if you're ignorant to the truth. And that's what the Bible is revealing. If I'm deceived, but I'm thinking I'm following the truth, you're in bondage. And the Bible reveals the only way we can have truth and make it to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And we're going to learn some more things. And let's see what the Bible says here in 1 Peter 1, 23 through 25. And it says, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth what? Forever. For all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man is as flowers of the grass and the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. But the what, everybody? The word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is a word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is it. It is forever, friend. It is absolute. It is truth. And I can just tell you this. There is no atheist that disproves God. God has already proven himself in nature. God has already proven himself in, in the lives of many people. The Bible reveals in the beginning God created. And there's no man on this planet has disproved God. There's no man on this planet has proved evolution. The Bible reveals clearly there is none else but God. And we're going to learn more about this truth as we continue to go on. Because now it is time, friend. It is time to get into the word of God and study it like you never studied it before. Like I said, I don't know what your background is. I don't know what, how much you know. You may know a lot about the word of God, but I want to motivate you to get into the word of God and share the word of God. And this gospel, the kingdom should be preached to all the world as a for witness in all nations. And then shall the end come. Don't you want the end to come? Aren't you tired of this, this, this old, cold, uh, destructive world that destroys people's lives? It's time to wake up, friend. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn there real quick. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and then we're, we're going to get into this boot camp. I'm just kind of setting you up. Matthew 24, let's go there real quick. Matthew 24, and you'll see, again, Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto what? All the world, as a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now, this gospel is what we're going to be talking about, the everlasting gospel which we find in Revelation 14, 6, the everlasting gospel. Now, you need to understand the context of this gospel. See, this gospel that the Lord is talking about, he ain't talking about no mamby-pamby gospel. He's not talking about a corrupt gospel. He's talking about a gospel that will literally get you persecuted. Because when you go back and look at the text above Matthew 24, 14, and you go to, starting with verse Let's say verse uh, nine. And this is what God says. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and they shall what? Kill you and, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall be betrayed by one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive what? Many. In other words, deception is revealing here we see it appears to be the truth, but it's not the truth. Now, the only way you gonna know the truth is studying the word of God. But I want to continue. And in verse 11, no, verse 12. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax what? Cold. Then I'll read verse 10. Because we got to see at verse 10. Look at verse 10. I want to bring you back to verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Why? Because you're given the real gospel. The real gospel causes all this. The real gospel will literally prick your heart. And you're going to either do two, either one of two things. You are either submit to the truth 
and be, you not only be convicted, because that's what the pricking is, you be convicted and submit to the truth and be converted by the love of Jesus Christ, or you persecute those who's following the truth. That's only two. You'll see in the end of time, you're either going to be a persecutor or persecute it. And the Bible reveals that there's going to be people betraying, betraying you based on the truth. But I'm going to continue. I'm going to skip down to verse 13 now. And he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And then it says, and this gospel, the gospel we just talked about that causes a lot, you know, either you're going to follow the truth and be persecuted or prick against the truth and be persecuted. But this is the gospel that must be preached to all the world for witness of all nations. And then shall the end come. Don't you want the end to come? Friend, don't you want the end to come? And if you want the end to come, man, there's some things that got, we got to just let go. We got to let go of sin. We got to let go of the NFL. We got to let go of the NBA. Now, if you, if you still want to hold on to Hollywood, I mean, really, what does Hollywood have to offer? Nothing. It's lies anyway. They have nothing to offer, friend. Now, are you trying? See, the reality is, in these last days, the only way we're going to make it, we have to let go, detach ourselves from the world, detach ourselves from the Hollywood, can detach ourselves from the foolishness, and can literally clean on to the word of God in these last days. That's the only way you're going to make it. The only way you're going to make it is in the word of God. And you have to know it and study it for yourself. Just going to church alone is not, is not going to do it. You have to have a daily study. Matter of fact, let's go to the word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Key thing, study. And this is not just, just glancing over, just reading a little bit. This is literally investigating. That's when you, when you look at the Greek word of study is investigating the word of God. S- comparing scripture with scripture. And understanding that this, this word is a living word. Now let's go to 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. I want you to understand this. I mean, this is serious, friend. I want you to understand this. Knowing this first, that no prophecy... In the scripture is given of any private interpretation. No prophecy. This is a Bible prophecy boot camp. So we're going to read and understand prophecy, but it's not based on my interpretation. We're going to allow the Bible reveal the truth. Comparing scripture with scripture. Because the Bible continues on verse 21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but a holy man of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And this is a promise, friend. Everything that we're studying in this this Bible prophecy boot camp, you want to know what's going to happen, what's what's happening now, what's going to, especially as we go into 2017, you want to make sure you listen, you, you watch, you record or whatever, take some notes. Because this, was, this will give you truth. This whole series. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16. The Bible says. So you can understand this is a living book. All scripture. How much scripture, everybody? All. That means from Genesis to Revelation. All scripture is given by the inspiration of who? God. The God that said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The same God that breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Don't you understand that inspiration means respiration in the Greek? So that's literally revealing that God breathed into the nostrils of the scriptures, the breath of life. So all scriptures from Genesis to Revelation is a living, breathing, holy book. Why? Let's go back to the book, 2 Timothy 3.16. Why? Is the scripture given? It's, it's profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, do you want to make it? Now, are you, do you want to make it? Do you want to allow God to have surgery on you to take out the old stony heart and give you a heart of flesh, a heart of Christ? Friend, let's study the word of God. 
because God's word is a living book. I don't care what other people try to say. Is this, this book is just made up by man. No, it's not. It's a living book. That's a five thousands of years where Satan tried his best to get rid of this book. And it's still living today. Now, the book, the, 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 the version that we're actually be studying is coming from the King James Version, KJV. Be honest with you, in these days and times, this is one of the only main uh, translations that I trust is the authorized King James Version. Because there's other versions, even the new King James, they change things, they change meanings. Uh, the NIV, uh, you know, I'm sticking with the King James Version. All right? So we're going to be studying from the King James Version. So let's go. This is the Bible Prophecy Boot Camp. So I'm inviting you now. I'm inviting you now. I just, that was just an introduction. I'm inviting you now to the Bible Prophecy Boot Camp. That's if you want to know truth or if you want to be motivated to go share the truth or you want to learn more. So what we're going to be doing is we literally are going to go through the basics of Bible prophecy. But first, we've got to understand the forgotten commandment. So let me just kind of explain to you how this is going to go along. Now, this is going to be the first lesson, and then we're going to have other lessons after this. And um, I'm going to try to get it up to Facebook, YouTube, every single day for the next three weeks, at least during the week, weekday. And so this is the Bible Prophecy Boot Camp, so welcome. All right, so when you're Bible Prophecy Boot Camp, you have to be totally uh, committed to what God has for you to do. And, and, and one thing you're going to consider doing is turn your TV off during this time of the boot camp. Turn the TV off. Put those things aside. Your video games, you got that? Put those things aside. Because I'm going to tell you, if that's what you're still into and we're close to the end of time, you're not going to make it. I mean, I'm just being real. If, if, if Hollywood's still your thing and we're still to the end of time, you're not going to make it. If you, you're still wasting your time on Sundays, Watching the NFL all day or the NBA, you're not going to make it. If ESPN is still your thing and you got to keep rooting for your team to run a ball to a line or, or somebody to, to, to dunk a ball into a cylinder rim, to a round uh, rim or have you, and hang on it, and you know, you're just not going to make it, man, because it's, it, that's a distraction and when you need to be in the Word of God. I'm just being real with you. And, and so I'm not going to, so that's my promise is to give you the truth straight from the Word of God. And we see these things from the word of God. But I want you to go and understand. So the Bible prophecy boot camp, we're actually going to be using, of course, the word of God. And we all, as I guide, we're going to be using the book that we just put together, the book we just wrote that has been going out to various people out there in the community. It's called The Forgotten Commandment and the Mark of the Beast Crisis. This will be our main subject, The Forgotten Commandment and the Mark of the Beast Crisis. Now, if you want to get this particular book to use as your guide, you can go to pathwaytopeace.net and actually go and download it. Go to Sharing Books, download the PDF, and you get that for free. Now, if you want the actual copy itself, you can go ahead and order it, and you can, I'll send you a copy of the book. Now, if you want to get some box of books, you know, this is a lot cheaper to get it from the bo- for the box, and I'll send that to you either. Also, you can have a group. So you can do it as a group. You can do it individually. You can do it as a family. You can get the PDF free. Or if you want to go ahead and order the book on pathwaytopeace.net to actually get the physical book as we go through this Bible study. Because the book is literally a Bible study. That's what it is. It's set up as a Bible study, Bible question, Bible answer. And that's what you'll see in this particular series in this Bible prophecy boot camp. Now, let's go look at the format of the Bible Prophecy Boot Camp so you can kind of see what you're getting into for the most part. Now, we're going to be going through, like I mentioned before, the Forgotten Commandment and the Mark of the Beast Crisis. So it's, it's, <laughs> this thing is going to be deep, man. Now, if you don't understand the Forgotten Commandment, if you don't understand the basics of the Forgotten Commandment, you're, that, that's then going into the book of Revelation and Daniel, you're going to miss it. So we're going to be starting with the forgotten commandment. And I'm getting the details on that as we go along. Now, under that module, so that's module one, the forgotten commandment. There's going to be three lessons under that particular module on our training. Then after that, we, see, after we got those basics and done and out of the way, so you understand that, then we're going to get into some meat of Bible prophecy. Now, this is designed for those who don't even know nothing about Bible prophecy, but those who want to learn more. 
who knew some, know some things, but they want to know more. They want to, they want to train and teach others. You want to make sure you're with module number two in understanding so we can understand the mark of the beast crisis. I'm going to tell you, it's right upon us, friend. And if you have no idea what the mark of the beast is, what the beast is, what the image of the beast is, and all these other things that the Bible reveals, Babylon, you're, going to be, you're not going to make it. I'm just being straight. I mean, we are living at that time. So we got module number two is the mark of the beast crisis. We got 19 lessons, mainly focused on Daniel Revelation. So you're going to be learning something like you never learned before. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter what denomination you are or what have or what your belief is. You just want to know. You just want to investigate. And that's what we're going to be doing, investigating the word of God. This is boot camp. We are living in that time. I believe this is the last generation. So we need to understand what the word of God says. So before we get into the particular, the first module, we're going to pray. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord, there are those that decide to go ahead and join us. And they say they want to know your truth for such a time as this. So, Lord, we just pray that you move with power upon the hearts and the minds of people as we get into the word of God. In Jesus name. Amen. All right, everybody. Let's go to Revelation twenty two fourteen. This is study time. We, we need to stop being entertained and let's study. Our brains are so entertained so many times. Revelation twenty two fourteen. I want you to catch this. All ministers, I don't care who, what church you go to, catch this, all right? Blessed are they that what? Do his commandments. Catch that, everybody. And we're, we're looking at Revelation twenty two fourteen. Matter of fact, if you, you look at your Bible, that's the last book of the Bible. Matter of fact, that's the last chapter of a bible and the bible is revealing blessed are they that what do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city so understand that so god's revealing i got to keep the commandments of god oh some people say oh, so what's got to do with prophecy it has a lot to do with prophecy because of revelation 14 said 12 revelation 14 12 says here are they that keep the commandments of god here is a patience of the saints, and here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. But then we learn in Revelation 12 that Satan is extremely wroth. He makes war with those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimonies of Jesus. So that tells you something. We need to know about the commandments, don't we? And that's our first lesson. <laughs> Bible prophecy boot camp. All my campers, all the soldiers who recognize who we're fighting. We fight not against bless, uh, flesh and blood. We fight against principalities, demonic spirits, and we got to use the word of God to fight. So this first lesson in our Bible boot camp is lesson number one, all within, all in with all 10. Don't miss that, everybody. All in with all 10. Now, so let's go ahead and, and, and study real quick. And understand, and this is the foundation. You need to understand this now. Because we just read earlier, blessed are those that do the commandments of God. And this is in Revelation. And so it has a lot to do with Bible prophecy and understanding Bible prophecy. Now, if you don't catch this, this is going to be very hard for you to understand as we go into Daniel Revelation and standing up for truth. All right? So you need to understand this. And so you won't be falling for error. Now, are we all to keep God's commandments. Are we to keep all of God's commandments? That's the first one. Now let's look at the Bible. John 14, 15 says what? Just as Jesus speaking himself, if ye love me, what did Jesus say? Keep my commandments. And so we can't say what well, all oh, the commandments are done away with. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk. We're going we're gonna to deal with that in this series. We're going to deal with that. But Jesus says here clearly, if you love me, Keep my commandments. Now, if you don't love him, that's a whole other thing. But if you love him, not just professing with your mouth, the Bible says you're going to keep. And then Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and get and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And that's Solomon speaking. Solomon who had everything. Solomon who was a trillionaire in our, in our day and time. See, Solomon would be, on, be, on, be richer than all the men on the earth because he had everything. 
He had, I mean, he had whole cities holding his chariots and horses. I mean, this, this man had everything. And in the end, he realized that vanity, vanity, all is vanity. I had everything. And he concluded at the end, fear God and keep his commandments. But this is the whole duty of man. And we saw, we just saw earlier what God says, do the command. Blessed are they that do the commandments. So the commandments, yes, we got to keep the commandments. And the Bible reveals all ten. And we're going to learn more about that in a little bit. Now, what are the three main purposes of the Ten Commandments of God, also known as the law of God? And again, what's the three main purposes? What is the purpose of the Ten Commandments? Let's go ahead and, and look at this first. First thing you need to understand, it defines and reveals sin clearly. That's number one. It defines and reveals sin clearly. What's some Bible text that reveal that? Now, 1 John 3, 4, you want to make sure you know this, friend. 1 John 3, 4, whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. In other words, sin is a disobedience of God's law, which is also known as his Ten Commandments. I'm going to show you clearly that the law is revealing the commandments, the Ten Commandments, they both are the same. Now, a lot of people ask, so what is sin? What is being bad? The Bible reveals it's the commandments. It's clear. It's ten commandments. They're not principles. They're not suggestions. They're ten commandments that God has given us that define sin. It's very clear. So the commandments define sin. Let's go to Romans 3.20. It makes me, even makes it very clear, too. Romans 3.20. This is Paul speaking. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Notice here, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. God's not going to have us guessing what being bad is or have be, being in sin. He's going to say, well, so how do I know I'm in sin? And you know, where it reveals that I'm in sin. The Bible says it. Let's now look at Romans 7, 7, some more proof text. And proof text to prove that the law of God is his 10 commandment law. Let's go to Romans 10, 7, 7. What shall we say then is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. What is Paul saying? I don't even know what sin is, but by the law, the law reveals sin. And then he continues on, for I have not known lust. He gives an example. I have not known lust, except the law had said, thou shall not covet. Now, where do you see, where's the law that thou shall not covet? It's in the 10th commandment. Thou shall not covet. It's very clear that Paul is pointing back to the 10 commandments as revealing what sin is. So understand it. It's very clear. It's not, it's not, it's not complex. See, the law is like a mirror that reveals sin. Now, the law cannot save you from sin. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. But the law reveals sin like a mirror. Now, if I look into a mirror and I have dirt on my face, the mirror cannot clean my face, can it? I, I can put my face to the mirror. It's not going to clean the face. Only thing that can clean my face if I have dirt on it is a washcloth. The same thing with the word of God. The word of God, the Ten Commandments, is like a mirror, it can't clean you from sin. It can't save you from sin. So if I'm just looking in the law and it's reflecting to me sin, I gotta, there's, there's, there's something I have to do. And of course, as we learn later on, I got to turn to Jesus. Amen. Because only he can cleanse me from sin. Do you understand that? Now let's look at this, the, the second reason for the law of God, the Ten Commandments. The second reason for the law of God is a standard of righteousness in which we are judged. It's the standard. It's a standard of righteousness. It's a standard of right living. All right. So when I keep when I keep the law of God through Jesus Christ in me, see, because we'll learn as we go on, the, it's impossible for you to keep the law in your own flesh. So the only way, because we'll learn later, is that the law of God is spiritual and you are flesh. Now, the only way I can keep that law is I have to allow God to live in me and where I both to will and to do his good pleasure. So that's 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 the bottom line, friend. But it is the standard. God has a standard. Now, let's go to Psalms 119, 172. We're going to go through a lot of scripture here. Now, many tongues shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are what everybody 
righteousness. Catch it. This is. The Bible text says it itself. We got to go what the Bible says. It says the commandments are righteousness. And that's what all this is all about. It's about what the Bible says. I'm not talking about what a denomination says. I'm not talking about what your mama said. I'm not talking about what a pastor said. I'm talking about what the Bible is saying. So either you're going to follow what the Bible is saying, put down your pride and say, hey, I'm going with the Bible. Or you're going to follow man's traditions. Do you really care in these last days what people think? Or are you going to follow what the Bible says? Let's go to James 2, 11 and 12. James 2, 11 and 12. For he that say, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit adultery, yet if thou kill, art thou become a transgressor of the law? So speak ye. So that again, that points you to that he's talking about the law of God, the Ten Commandments. That's where you'll find that. But he says in verse 12, so speak ye and so do as they that shall be what? Judged by the law of liberty. And we saw in verse 11, he's clearly talking about the Ten Commandments. And it reveals that the Ten Commandments is a law of liberty, friend. It will set you free. It don't don't put you in bondage. Don't believe a minister telling you that the law of God puts you in bondage because they're telling you that they don't know what they're talking about. The law of God's revealing to you what sin is, is telling us what the standard of righteousness is revealing to us. We are judged by it. And the only way as we learn to keep it is through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's kind of like this. The speed limit sign. The speed limit sign defines the law. Of the speed limit on that road. And in this particular in this particular example, it shows it's 55. Now, can that speed limit sign make you keep the law? No. The Ten Commandments can't make you keep the law. Just knowing the Ten Commandments cannot make you keep the law. See, it has to be an internal, it has to be spiritual, it has to be God working in you. And then God will move you to keep his law because you do it out of love. Amen. But like the speed limit sign, it ain't going to make you take go 55. And if you're going 75, you pass it. And then all of a sudden they have some device on there to make you go 55 and you're going 75. No, no. See, it's in your mind. You look at the sign and say, hey, I want to keep the law. I want to keep the law. I want to keep keep people safe. And I don't want a ticket. (laughs) Now, let's look at the third reason why God has given us the Ten Commandments. The third reason is conversion tool that points you to Jesus. Amen. We know that it is a mirror that reveals sin, but it points you to Jesus. Matter of fact, Psalms 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. So you see clear the law of the Lord is perfect. What does it do? Convert the soul. It literally turns you to Jesus because without Jesus, you cannot be cleansed from sin. Now, if we just have the law without Christ, there's no hope. But it's Christ who's grace. (laughs) Christ is grace. His salvation is grace that reveals that gives us an opportunity to be cleansed from sin. Because remember, a law was broken. The law was broken. The wages of sin is death. The wages of breaking God's law is death. Because we know a sin is breaking God's law. So the wages of breaking God's law is death, eternal death. But the gift, the cleansing, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's how they both go hand in hand. But once I am in Christ, again, I keep his law. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and look at some more real quick. Galatians 3.24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ. The law is your teacher. That's what the schoolmaster is. That we might be justified by faith. Again, the law does not justify you. The law does not take you from guilty to not guilty. Because remember, if the law is breaking, you're guilty. And, and, and guilty means death. But through Christ, you go from guilty to not guilty. So, But that law revealed to you as a schoolmaster that you are in sin. You need Christ. You need to go to him from sin cleaner so to be to cleanse from sin. So it is the schoolmaster. It's the teacher that says, man, if you want to be cleansed, if you want to be washed, you need to go to Christ. He will wash you. That's grace. Amen. That's why we have the law. 
Now, I know there's a lot of talk. Oh, you, you, you're keeping the law and you're in bondage. And we saw the law is, is liberty, so that's not true. But then you're doing legalism. They're just trying to do it on your own legalism. Uh, I mean, and, and people say that. They try to, I don't, I, you know, they say these things to try to, uh, to try to put you down and not understanding the purpose of the law. Now, it's obeying God's law, his Ten Commandments, legalism. You know, I'm, I'm, and I'm talking about it in a, in a negative sense that people try to, you know, put if a person says, you know, they're trying to keep the law of God or whatever. Because, again, we can't keep it in ourselves. It's through Christ. But this whole legalism thing that people try to stamp on people trying to keep the law of God through Christ. John fourteen twenty one, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. This is, this is good. Jesus himself talking. He it is that loveth me. Now, I don't know how much straight you need to be, what God is saying. Jesus is saying this. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. But the key thing is here, clearly, again, Jesus says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is, it is that loveth me. I mean, that's not legalism. Do you call that legalism? God calls it love, true love, that you're manifesting your love by being obedient to God. Now, does it make any sense that a child that is obedient to their parents, you call that child, y'all, oh, you're legalist, you're just trying to get in good for your parents. That's just legalism. He's just obeying everything you say. I mean, you wouldn't say anything like that. See, understand this. Obedience to truth mo- motivated by God's love is never legalism. Under- it's very important as we go forward, as we get closer to the end of time, to understand Bible prophecy, you need to understand this key point. Obedience to truth motivated by God's love is never legalism. So it would never make sense to mock God's people who are supposed to be the children of God and they're being obedient to the commandments of God. Would you call them legalist? Doesn't make any sense. Obedience is not legalist, friend. And don't ever forget that. Now let me ask you a question. Is it enough to know about the commandments of God without obeying all of them. Is it enough to know about the commandments of God without obeying them? Now, this is, again, people just, if you just want to talk to talk, and that's it, without obeying God's word, there we go. Let's see what the Bible says. James 1, 23 through 25. I hope you're with me now. Come on. Let's stay with the word. Pray. For if any be a hearer of the word, Here it is. And not a doer. He is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Let the Bible just talk, friend. I hope you got it. Now, let's go ahead and move on. Now, what did God write his law on and what did he call him? Let's go to Exodus 31, 18. Exodus 31, 18. Remember, I'm just I'm just following up the, the Bible lesson right here of the Forgotten Commandment and the Mark of the Beast Crisis. Like I said, you can go ahead and download that at the website, pathofthepeace.net. But let's go ahead and look at that. What did God write in his law and what did he call them? Here it is, Exodus 31, 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end to the communing with him upon the Mount Sinai. What did he give him? Two tables of testimonies, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Now, why you notice is God that wrote. He spoke the commandments and he wrote the commandments. Now, why did he write the commandments on a table of stone when he gave it to, to Moses on the mountain? Well, he could, have, he could have put it on paper, but he wrote it on stone to reveal, you know, you can't, once things are engraved in stone, you can't just take it out. God's revealing that it is permanent, that it was, we already read early, that it's everlasting. It's always been. So the reality is 
God's revealing to Moses that he's wrote it by with his own fingers, revealing to us also. He wrote it with the own finger on the table of stone to symbolize, to reveal to us the permanence of his law and that it cannot be changed. And we're going to look at some other texts on that another time. But let's go to Deuteronomy 4.13. Deuteronomy 4.13. And he declared unto you his covenant. And that's the commandments. That's his contract. Which I have commanded you to perform. Even though what everybody? Ten commandments. So that's where we get, that's where we get it from, there, from the Bible. Ten commandments. And he that wrote them upon two tables of stone. So we see clearly what the Bible says. He wrote it with his finger. And he wrote it on two tables of stone and he named it, called it the Ten Commandments. And this is a sacred contract between God and his people that God has put that God put together. (laughs) Amen. And God is perfect. Now, here it is. What are God's Ten Commandments? Now, it's not our intention in this study to to literally go through all the details of God's Ten Commandments. But you find it here in Exodus 20, verse one through 17. So let's go to Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17. I want you to notice something again. He's speaking to the children of Israel and to us. First of all, it says, and God spake all these words, saying, so we know it clearly who it's coming from. I am the Lord. Lord meaning self-existing one. Thy God have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. It is God. Remember, the, the law of God is a law of liberty. It is a law of God that sets you free. So God's revealing here clearly to the children of Israel and to us, it is the one of God. It is God who sets us free from sin, but it's the law of God that reveals sin. Now, let's look at the commandments. Commandment number one, thou shall not have any, thou shall have no other gods before me. Commandment number two, thou shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water that's under the earth. Thou shall not bow thyself to them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God. Am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, showing mercy unto them that a thousand of them that love me and here it is everybody and what keep my commandments you find that in the second commandment where God says the blessing of showing mercy to thousands of them that love him and he says it what is love loving him by keeping his commandments it's in the commandments that God is telling you to keep the commandments amen now let's go to the third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. And number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that's within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it honor thy father fifth commandment honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee sixth commandment thou shalt not kill seventh commandment thou shalt not commit adultery eighth commandment thou shalt not steal ninth Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Tenth, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is our neighbor's. So here we see all ten are equally important. So if I'm a thief, I'm in sin. If I'm a liar, bear false witness, I'm in sin. If I put other gods before the God of heaven that created heaven and the earth, I'm in sin. If I'm bowing down to man's idea, my own ideology, or the idols of this world, the Hollywoods, the, the star, the uh, dancing with the stars, and all this other foolishness, I'm in sin. If I'm breaking the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and I don't keep it holy, I'm in sin. And if I re- the Bible reveals that I'm in sin, and the Bible reveals the law of God doesn't change, the Bible reveals that I am chained to and bound to sin, and my fate is death. The Bible reveals that, son, this is the, the commandments. You can't, you can't keep it on your own, but if you want to be cleansed from your sin, you want to be set free, go to the truth that will set you free, and that truth is up, there's nothing other than Jesus Christ himself who came down out of his grace and love for us to give us freedom. Amen? So that's where I go. 
So again, friend, the law of God is sure. The law of God will stand fast forever and ever. The law of God is uprightness. The law of God is truth in these last days. We see it here, Psalms 111, 7 and 8. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All of his commandments are what, everybody? Sure. Verse 8, they stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. I hope you got it, everybody. Now, what does the Ten Commandments teach us about love? Because you'll find the foundation of God's commandments is all about love. Now, again, if you don't understand this basic study, you're not going to understand when we start to move toward understanding the mark of the beast crisis. When the Bible says we've got to keep all these commandments in Revelation, we'll see that over and over again. So what does the Bible teach us about love? Because it's motivated with love. Let's go to Matthew 22, 37 through 40, because I want you to understand this now. Because some people say, well, it's only two commandments, loving God, loving others. We're going to see that here and how it relates to the Ten Commandments. All right. Let's look at that. Let's go to Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said unto them, thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love the Lord, love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, verse 40 is the key. Verse 40 points us back to the Ten Commandments. Verse 40 reveals that the commandments is based on love. It says, verse 40, and all these commandments hang on all the law. Did you get it? Hang all the law. That's the Ten Commandments. And the prophets. The prophets pointed to the Ten Commandments. The prophets pointed to the testimony of Jesus Christ. They all go together. That's what the prophets of the Old Testament pointed to. It pointed to the Messiah, the Messiah that didn't come to change the law. The Messiah that came to fulfill it, give us clear understanding of the law to establish his law. Now, you see clearly on this screen here, it reveals love of God, the love of others. Hang the Ten Commandments and the prophets, basically the testimonies of the prophets. So you see here the first The first four commandments that we just read earlier reveal how to love God. And the last six commandments is our relationship with others, how to love others, starting with your parents first, all the way to everyone else. You know, I'm that father and that mother. That's the fifth commandment. That's the and then take your all down to the 10th commandment. That just shows you how to have a relationship with others. The, the, the first four commandments shows you how to have a relationship with God, having no other gods before him, not taking his name in vain. Keep it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. These are the how to love God. And these two hang on all the 10, the ten, ten commandments hang on loving God and loving others. I hope you caught that, everybody. I hope you caught it. Let's go ahead and move on because we're about to wrap this up for the day. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. My timekeeper is telling me gotta, it's about time to wrap up. And we're almost done. And it's the first phase, the first lesson of the Bible prophecy boot camp. Now, boot camp, you got to have some discipline. Boot camp, you got to go ahead and you got to study. You want to make it through? You want to make it through the trial? You want to make it through this war? You got every soldier goes through a boot camp. But anyway, let's wrap this up. How does God's Ten Commandment law directly reflect his character? How does God's Ten Commandment law directly affect or reflect, reflect his character? Very important, friend. Because there's many people who are who are saying the law of God is bondage. No, we're not to keep that law. Don't you know, anytime you're saying that, you are literally dissing God. Because the law of God is reflects the character of God. Did you get it to miss it? Now let's go to the screen. Let's go. You will see clearly from this example that the character of God and the law of God match. Perfect reflection of God. For example, let's look at this. Look at this. Just real quick. The characteristic of God and the characteristic of his law. Love. The Bible says God is love. First John 4, 8. God is love. God's law is love. Romans 13, 10 says the love. Love is a fulfilling of the law. Don't you know the Bible reveals God is holy. His law is holy. Talking about the Ten Commandments. Psalms 99, 9. 
says the Lord of God is holy. Romans seven twelve. the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. The Bible says God is perfect. God's law is perfect. Psalms 1830, ask for God, his way is what everybody? Perfect. Psalms 197, the law of the Lord is perfect. Come on, God is true. It says God's law is what? True. John 33, thir- John 333, God is true. Psalms 119, 142, thy law is the truth. It says God is pure. God's law is pure. First John 3, 3, he, God, is pure. Psalms 19, 8, the commandment of the Lord is pure. God is righteousness. God's law is righteousness. Psalms 145, 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways. Psalms 119, 172, for all thy commandments are righteousness. God is faithful. God's law is faithful. First John 1 9, God is faithful. Psalms 119, 86, all thy commandments are faithful. Y'all seeing this? Isn't this exciting? Let's continue on. God is unchangeable. God's law is unchangeable. Malachi 3 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. Matthew 5, 18, till heaven and earth pass away. Now, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. God's law is eternal. God is eternal. Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is our refuge. Psalms 119, 7 and 8, all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. Do you got it? When you talk about God's commandments, you're talking about the character of God. When you attack the commandments of God, you are attacking God himself because the commandments of God and God himself reflect each other. Amen. I hope that was enlightening, friend. It's a perfect reflection of God. I truly hope you ex- understand that we are living in the last days. That's our first module. So as you made it through, friend, and I'm praying, you pray, you pray, you pray. The next module, we'll be going through the forgotten commandment. Remember the Sabbath day. And you need to understand that this, 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 this goes hand in hand with the last day events. And if you don't understand this next subject of the forgotten commandment, you're not going to understand the mark of the beast crisis. So you're going to make sure you click on. And I encourage you, friend, I should have said this earlier. If, if, if you want to be a soldier, you want to be one who's sharing the truth, share this video. Share it on Facebook. Click your share. That's all you have to do is hit share. Don't be ashamed. Are you ashamed of the truth? Your family, your friends need to know the truth. Let God prick their heart and their mind for themselves. You share it and let God do the rest. Because there are so many people that need to know the truth in these last days. Did you understand what God has just revealed in his word? That the law of God is perfect? That God is perfect? I mean, that, that is amazing. That is amazing, friend. That is amazing. So I will see you again. And you can click on tomorrow, go to your Facebook. I'll put it back up. I'll put another one up, you know, like I said, for the next, it'll probably be for the next two to three weeks. And then we have the series all together. You can go back and look at it again. This is a boot camp that you can actually look over and over again, study for yourself. Like I mentioned before, if you want to get the physical copy of the book, go to pathwaytopeace.net. You can get the physical copy itself. You can get some boxes if you want to share with others. Or you can also get the PDF. You can get a free download itself. So, again, I encourage you, friend. This is it. This is the last days. We are at this. Is, you, are, uh, you are the last generation. And you will be learning some things as we go in Bible prophecy of what this president election is really all about. You understand? So don't get discombobulated. Jesus is the king. God is in charge. He's going to set up an everlasting kingdom. So under you, there is hope. There is that blessed hope. Amen. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. Continue to abide in us and we abide in you. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your commandments to us. Revealing the commandments of God, the reflection of the character of God. Revealing that the, the law of God just reveals sin. It points us to Jesus. And Jesus is the only one that can convert us. Only we can repent and turn from sin and be converted through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we're praying for every single individual that's watching, that's listening to this right now. And we're praying that people wake up to your truth in these last days. We love you. We praise you. Until next time. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time. Friend.